national delegation in Kuwait talks insist on the importance of full implementation of the ceasefire terms. The warplanes of the aggression forces and their missionaries continue violating the ceasefire in several provinces. Yemeni tribes mobilize support for army and popular committees in all fronts. Hello and welcome our viewers with Yemen News. Today's top story is the head of the Supreme Revolutionary Committee, Mohammed Ali Houthi, sends a protest letter to the United Nations with regard to preventing access of Orient ship into Al Hudayda port. He sent the letter to the UN office in Sana'a informing them that the aggression forces prevented Orient ship that is loaded with diesel for Al Hudayda power plant to unload its cargo in Al Hudayda port. He clarified that people of coastal province of Al Hudayda that desperately need electricity because of the hot climate. He stressed that the United Nations should take responsibility for allowing the access of food, fuel and medical supplies into Yemen, pointing that the unjust blockade has further deteriorated the humanitarian situation in Yemen. He also said that these actions by the aggression countries amount to crimes against humanity according to the international humanitarian law. <coughs> The Supreme Revolutionary Committee called on the citizens of Al Hudaydah province to stage massive rallies next Sunday to protest against preventing access of Orient ship to deliver its cargo of diesel for Al Hudaydah power plant. The second session of Yemeni talks in Kuwait has concluded. In this session, the national delegation insisted on the importance of implementing the case fire. They further addressed the difficulties that the United Nations face with regard to the implementation of the case fire agreement. They discussed the required mechanisms to ensure full implementations of the case fire. They also discussed the agenda of the talks. The national delegation participating in Kuwait talks stressed on the importance of implementing the case fire before entering any, any talks. They also expressed their reservations about the agendas of the aggression countries try to impose through the UN Special Envoy Ismail Walda Sheikh. The delegation also met with the leadership of Kuwait Foreign Ministry and discussed with them the guarantees for the success of political talks. They also pointed to the daily violations of the case fire by the aggression forces and their missionaries. The UN Special Envoy for Yemen, Ismail Walda Sheikh, described the first sessions of the talks in Kuwait as constructive and promising. He indicated that a positive atmosphere dominated the negotiations during which some points were discussed on consolidating the case fire. Addressing a press conference after concluding a session of negotiations, the, U the envoy said that they have addressed the implementation of the case fire which was went in effect on the 10th of April and the work mechanisms of the local monitoring committees. He noted that in spite of the difficulties on the ground, the party's commitment to the case fire is up to 80%. The envoy argued all parties to promote uh, tolerance uh, for achieving peace. He also referred uh, that the negotiations receive international support and the UN procured peace talks will continue with the aim of reaching a consensus uh, to resolve the crisis. The national delegation have argued the media outlets to push for the success of the political talks in Kuwait. The official spokesman for Ansarullah and the secretary general of the GBC, Arif Azuka, have a meeting with the accompanying media teams. In the meeting, they argued them to take responsibility for positive reporting in order to contribute to the success of political talks. They also stressed that the aim is to stop the aggression and lift the blockade on Yemen as well as to preserve the sovereignty and independence of the homeland. They asked them to not to do like the media outlets of the aggression who try to mislead the public opinion and disrupt the political talks. 
four people have been killed in Al-Baydha province in the attacks of the mercenaries. A military source reported that the mercenaries of the aggression continue violating the case fire, pointing that they have targeted residential areas in a Zahir district, killing four people and injuring many others. Meanwhile, the warplanes of the Saudi American aggression and their mercenaries continue violating uh, the case fire agreement in several provinces. A military source reported that the warplanes of the Saudi American aggression have carried out five riots on Al Jaf province, targeting several areas of Al Matun district. While their mercenaries continue their military operations, attacking positions of the Army and Popular Committees in different fronts. The source confirmed that the Army and Popular Committees are committed to the implementation of the case fire but they are fully prepared to counter any violations. The local committee for monitoring the implementation of case fire in Al Jaf province have signed a deal on the mechanism of implementing the case fire in all the fronts. The parties to the conflict agreed on the required mechanisms to halt military operations all over the province in order to prevent further violations of the case fire agreement. The committee endorsed an immediate halt to all acts of uh, violence and confrontations. They also agreed on forming a joint committee to facilitate the humanitarian work, including delivering relief assistance and exchange of prisoners. Our crew have documented the, the destruction caused by the aggression in Harad district in Hajjah province. The footage shows uh, the brutal aggression that has destroyed almost everything in Harad district. For more than a year, the warplanes of the aggression and their mercenaries continued their attacks on residential areas and civilian infrastructure facilities, destroying homes, schools, mosques, markets, and everything. Because they could not take control of the district, they intensified their air strikes and turned it into a pill of rubble. The massacres and destruction committed by the aggression forces and their missionaries in Harad district is a living proof of the war crimes against humanity. The Natural Disasters Committee discussed the mechanism of providing the people's need in Sana'a and Amran provinces. Upon the di directions of the head of the Supreme Revolutionary Committee, the Revolutionary Committee member Talal Aqlan presided over the meeting of the Natural Disasters Committee. In the meeting, they discussed the required mechanisms for providing the people's needs in the affected areas of Sana'a and Amran provinces. They also agreed on forming committees to pay field visits to the affected areas and evaluate the damage caused by the torrential rain. The Yemeni community in Russia uh, organized a symposium, an exhibition, about the crimes of the Sudan American aggression in Yemen. The exhibition was held in Moscow under the speeches of the Organization for Opposing Globalization in uh, Russia Federation. The head of the supreme, uh, the head uh, of the organization, Alexander Viktorovich, delivered a word condemning the war crimes committed by the Saudi American aggression against the Yemeni people. He said that Saudi Arabia is accused of committing massacres against civilians in Yemen. He added that Yemeni people have the right to call on the international community and humanitarian organizations to acknowledge the war crimes committed by the Saudi regime against innocent civilians in Yemen. Yemeni people continue their protests in several provinces to condemn the ongoing Saudi American aggression and the unjust blockade on our country. Protesters from different political and social backgrounds have strongly condemned the violations of the case fire agreement by the Saudi led aggression and forces and mercenaries, pointing that they aim at undermining the political talks in Kuwait. They have also denounced the silence of international community over the ongoing war crimes committed by the aggression forces against innocent civilians in Yemen and the ongoing destruction of infrastructure, saying that these are violations of the international humanitarian law. Protesters have called on the, uh, United, the United Nations and humanitarian organization to take actions to put an end to the unjust aggression and lift the blockade. While Yemeni tribes have also confirmed their support for army and popular committees to defend their homeland in all fronts. Here is a reminder of top stories once more.
international delegation in Kuwait talks insist on the importance of a full implementation of the ceasefire terms. The warplanes of the aggression forces and their machineries continue violating the ceasefire in several provinces. Yemeni tribes mobilize support for army and popular committees in all fronts. Ladies and gentlemen, we have ended our news for today. Thanks for being with us and see you.